For much of the year they're just dried out shallow depressions in the landscape but with a good soaking rain these clay pans can come to life teeming with microscopic larvae, insects and other invertebrates making the most of their all too brief opportunity to mate and multiply before the water holes dry up. Hello, I'm Penelope Bergen and today I'm at the Ilpapa clay pans just to the southwest of Alice Springs in Central Australia. Recent rain has transformed the area and the shallow lakes are playing temporary home to thousands of water birds and other wildlife. But what I'm really interested in seeing is what's in the water, the tiny wriggling critters you can see just below the surface. My guide is Jochen van der Eyden, specialist keeper of invertebrates and reptiles at the Alice Springs Desert Park. We've got shield shrimp, we've got um, fairy shrimp and we've got clam shrimp. So what's that bizarre looking... Um Alien, alien looking thing that, that we've got here in front well, of us. Um, they're actually the shield shrimps and um, these guys here are actually still pretty small. They can uh, grow a lot bigger than that. When the clay pans are dry there's actually a lot of eggs laying dormant in the clay pans and then uh, when there is a flood like a lot of rain like we had in the last couple of weeks um, these eggs will actually hatch out and grow into these amazing critters. You've got some here in a little uh, container in some clear water um, when you turn them over, they've got these really bizarre looking fleshy pincers. Yeah, look, they've got a lot of uh, frills uh, underneath um, their body, um, but it's uh, mainly to uh, absorb oxygen in the water. So if you find that the oxygen levels are getting really low in the water, you'll find the shield shrimp upside down on the surface of the water trying to get the water into the, of, uh, the oxygen into their gills. What sort of a lifespan do they have? It's a bit hard to tell, um, but um, people have kept them alive in aquaria for up to three months. But obviously they're not meant to live for that long a time. Most of the clay pens are not full for that sort of time. And these clay pens here, you can already see they're sound to dry pretty much as we speak. And they've been full for about two weeks, I guess. They'll probably be here for a couple of more weeks. And then, um, yeah, by that time, the uh, shield shrimp would have laid eggs waiting for the next flood. A lot of people might see them and um, mistake them for tadpoles unless they're looking closely but how ancient is a form of life like this? I mean they, they look prehistoric. They are, well they really are prehistoric and um, they've certainly been around for millions of years. They look amazing I mean they still surprise me just to, they got these amazing shields and frills and yeah, so what do they actually eat aside from algae? Do they eat some of the other little uh, fishy things that we're um, seeing here? Yeah, they mainly eat organic matter, but um, look, if you stick them all together in the tub, they'll uh, start eating each other eventually. Just looking in here, we've got this, what look like tiny, tiny, tiny little fish. Um, those ones are the fairy shrimps, and there's um, 64 species currently recognised in Australia, and two of them, them are introduced, which people might know as brine shrimp, that uh, people use to feed to their fish in the aquarium. But uh, we're currently uh, collecting samples for um, uh, Dr. Brian in, uh, in Sydney and he's already discovered a couple of new species and this is I think why these clay pens are such a valuable resource and there's um, so many unknowns still about it. Within the clam shrimps there could be a couple of species in this clay pen. Um, and then on top of that you get all your tadpoles, so your frogs obviously breed when the, when the rains are here. And then on top of that you get all your uh, water invertebrates that uh, take fly during the night and um, they prey upon these, um, these critters as well. So it's, it's amazing, the, the clay pens are really full of life at this time of the year. Yeah, do we get um, any bigger fish? I mean these are all relatively small fish. critters, well <laughs> bigger aquatic creatures. Um, uh, the biggest ones you probably find here are some of the water invertebrates. Uh, there's one water invertebrate in particular which is called the giant water bug. Now it doesn't necessarily occur in Alice Springs uh, all the time but uh, what happens is when we get cyclones uh, up north, especially in WA, in the Pilbara region, these giant water bugs uh, uh, occur in high numbers and what they do is they take flight and will uh, fly thousands of kilometres and they will end up in clay pens like uh, these or even in someone's uh, backyard pool. Um, and you can recognize them quite easily. They're about uh, seven centimeters long and they're a really large bug and they've got these large forearms and what they will do is sit in ambush and basically eat anything that moves. Um, they will eat fish and uh, tadpoles, uh, shield shrimp, anything they can get their hands on. Um, yeah, so that's the largest probably sort of invertebrate you get out here. Um, and obviously there's a lot of frogs out here, but there's no fish in the clay pens that I know of. Um, but that's not to say that there isn't any. And we've got some other little things here that we're looking at, funny little red things. What are they? Yeah, they're actually the clam shrimp, and I'll see if I can get some bigger ones for you. But what you find is that you look at them, and uh, they're actually a little um, a little um, shell. They look like a little um, uh, like a clam shell, and inside there is actually a little shrimp. Um, but these ones are quite tiny. They could be a different species. Um, but it looks like they're mating. 
um, but I'll, I'll get you some bigger ones. Right, you've got a, got a little net here that you're running through the water. So each of these clay pens could contain different species and inside here there is a little tiny little shrimp and you can see it's starting to poke out now. Yep. They're still discovering new species uh, every time they go and take samples from clay pens uh, around Australia. What we've got going on out here in Alice Springs at the Alpapa clay pens is unique. Uh, it is it is really unique for Alice Springs, um, and these shield shrimp or a, a subspecies thereof, um, you might find even on top of Uluru. The way they get up there is um, the eggs are actually really light and tiny, and they will actually um, uh, get blown up there by the wind. You know, you can see how fragile these animals actually are and you can see that um, damage can be done quite easily um, by people that drive through these clay pans. Um, it's, it's, it's a real ecological sort of valuable source that we've got here that we probably need to be careful not to disturb too much. Is it something that we, do you think we maybe should be protecting a little bit more? Yeah, look my personal view is that we probably should protect the clay pans altogether and make it a, um, uh, a national park or at least a protected area. Um, but obviously that would require a lot of work and money. Um, but you can see at this time of the year now, it's so full of life, but then when it's dry, people would just see it as an extremely dry place and it has nothing to offer, but you can obviously see now that these ponds are absolutely teeming with life. Yeah, it's, it's an absolute little gem out here.